It might not look like it from afar, but there's a new mega tower from Santa Cruz, and we've had it in Bellingham, Washington for our enduro bike field test. So what's changed exactly? Well, it looks a lot like its predecessor. Santa Cruz has made this mega even more mega with updates to the suspension, geometry, and ditch those backpacks and bum bags, people, a storage compartment in the down tube for your supplies and treats that they're calling the glove box. Rear wheel travel is now up to 165 millimeters via a longer shock and lower leverage ratio, and that's paired with a 170 millimeter fork and a head angle in the low setting that's slacker than a V10. Our test bike is the oh, Mega Tower 2 CC X01 AXS RSV. Yes, that is actually the model name on their website, and it gets you a SRAM Axis drivetrain, carbon fiber reserve wheels, and a factory level suspension setup from Fox that all adds up to $11,199 American. Let's talk to the test riders to see how the new Mega Tower performed on the trail. All right, so those are all the details about the brand new Santa Cruz Mega Tower. We're gonna start with climbing now. Matt, what did you make of this bike on the climbs? Tell me how it pedaled first. So you'd think with 165 mils of travel, this might be a bit of a brute to get up the hill. I would think that. But the seat tube is relatively steep mm -hmm. and it's quite lightweight. Relatively speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Relatively speaking. Yeah. So you're saying out of out of these enduro bikes that we have here, this is a pretty decent climber. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Pedals well. Yep. No bob. Has the air shock with the climb switch. Tons of tall gears. Yeah. yeah easy okay. to get up there. Alicia, were you reaching down for that climb switch at all? Or did the bike pedal well enough you didn't really care? I mean, I could go either way. It pedaled pretty well. Like it didn't sink into the suspension really. It didn't feel like it was dragging or bobbing or losing much energy. That said, the climb switch was there, so it seems like it's a feature that you might as well use since you have it, but it doesn't necessarily need it. It's a pretty efficient climber. Mm -hmm. It would be very comfortable to pedal this for a long time, especially if you firm it up and just spin away, and it's 34 pounds, which in this context is pretty light. It's, I mean, it's more than three pounds lighter than a couple of the other bikes here, so. Yes. Yeah, for sure. What's the story, though, when you get it into some roots and tech? It's also not bad. It doesn't have quite as much traction as some of the other bikes on test, just because it is a little bit firmer. So you have a little bit of a trade-off with it being fairly efficient. Like it's so efficient that you do lose a little bit um, in terms of technical climbing and sensitivity. Yeah, that's one of the big strengths actually with these enduro bikes. It, it's sort of counterintuitive to say, but they do usually deliver so much traction and when it's wet and nasty out like it's been for you guys when you've been testing that that really helps but with this mega tower maybe being a little less forgiving on top it sounds like yeah it's not as good in those sort of situations I so out of all these enduro bikes that we have here we have seven of these big travel enduro bikes is this the one that you would choose if you wanted to do some big pedaling days on your long travel bike potentially yeah it's hard to pick out a single one because they are all kind of you know, they all have strengths and weaknesses, but this is definitely in the top few in terms of pedaling. Okay, so we've covered pedaling. What about when you're in some tricky, tight single track? I would imagine that this is less of a handful than something like the much longer Common Sol and some of the other bikes. Is that true? Yeah, it is true. The, the reach is a little bit shorter, but the wheelbase, at least the front center, is long for the reach of the bike. Okay. In the slack setting, I think it's about 472 reach. Um, but it still has a 63.5 head angle in the low setting. Yeah. So that does make it, um, it puts the front wheel or the front axle quite far out in front of your hands through tight switchbacks. So it requires a little bit more planning. Okay, so we're at the top of the hill. It's time to come back down the fun part. As usual, we're gonna talk about rear suspension first. Now, the previous Mega Tower, I've read that it is maybe not quite as forgiving as some other bikes in the same class. Is that still the same story mm -hmm. here with this bike? Yeah, so this Mega Tower has definitely carried that forward. I think they added five millimeters of travel. However, they didn't really add any plushness. It still, it works well, but it's a little bit harsh and a little bit chattery sometimes. And like it has a Fox 38 and an X2, and it felt really good for the most part, but the bike itself, the whole package is so stiff that 
sometimes the liveliness gets to the point where it does feel a little bit chattery. On the other side of that, I mean, it does have such a lively feel. It feels pretty energetic. It has some spark. It'll kind of zip around corners really nicely. And so it has positives there. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, I would agree. It's a little bit smaller than the other bike, so it worked really well for my body size. But um, it definitely had those attributes where it was a little chattery at low speed. And once you really got it going up to speed, it that's where it started to eat the bumps and felt a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matt, we talked about how the suspension was a little bit less forgiving at the top of the stroke. Um, what about at the other end of the stroke? Are you using all the travel too often, not enough? Yeah, I mean, we had the Float X2 shock, but it does come available with a coil shock as well. That might be a little bit more forgiving for riders that are generally riding more technical terrain at lower speeds, but that air shock offered like tons of ramp up for me. It wasn't overly progressive like I found on the Intense. It, it felt a lot more linear progressive and more um, predictable through those bigger hits. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. It didn't have the boing of the Intense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. More predictable. Alicia, earlier in the review, you were talking about how, well, it was maybe a little less forgiving, the rear suspension. It also gave the bike a lot of kind of spark and pep mm -hmm. to it, which I imagine now that we're gonna get into talking about the handling, in the slow speed stuff, that probably helps a bike like this a lot, especially compared to something that's more forgiving, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely, it's really easy to just move it around. Um, say you get to some roots and you wanna just pick it up and move it over, it's awesome for that. It'll snap through corners really nicely. It also had this tendency that I noticed, probably only because we were riding a bunch of them back to back, but the rear end broke free a little bit easier than most of the other bikes. And so I think that's probably because of the frame and the wheels being so stiff. It has those reserved carbon wheels. And so in a corner, it would break free, just lose a little bit of traction in actually a really predictable, really fun way. Didn't necessarily help with speed, but when it came to just like zipping the back end around, I thought that was a cool feature. All right. Now, Matt, what about when the speed's picked up? Tell me about stability. This thing is a little bit shorter than some of the other bikes here. So I wanna know if it felt less stable or if maybe that didn't have any drawbacks on the trail. Yeah, so the reach is a little bit shorter, but the head angle is quite slack at 63.5 in that low setting. And then they do have the size match chainstays, which grow. So for our large, they were around 441. So for me, I felt very centered on the bike. It felt very aggressive. The front wheel was way out ahead of me. And so for high speed charging, the bike felt really predictable through the big hits. Like I could tell where the bike was gonna be and I just felt very comfortable kind of straight bombing. Yeah. Alicia, what did you think of this thing when you were going fast? Yeah, I thought it was really fun to ride. Like I just had a good time. It's pretty neutral. So it's one of those bikes where you can ride it fast. You can ride it over chattery rough stuff and you can also ride it and it'll be pretty good in the tighter stuff. So overall, pretty solid all arounder. It sounds like we're really just trying to avoid saying the word versatile or well-rounded, but it so sounds like an easy to live with fly. one, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's maybe a little bit tougher to hold on to, but if you're willing to like grip it and rip it, it has that predictability where compared to the Intense, which they're both VPP bikes, there wasn't as much weight shifting and it was more predictable and just kind of, you stayed in the bike a little bit more, I think. Yeah, and mm -hmm. if you're more comfortable and the bike's more predictable, obviously you're either gonna go faster or have more fun. Okay, that's all for how the Mega Tower descends. We're gonna move on to this bike's build. This is an expensive bicycle that has some fancy things on it. So let's start with the stuff that we liked. I hope there's nothing that we didn't like because it costs a lot of money, but mm -hmm. what, what did you like? Yeah, so it's gonna be a little ridiculous, but I'm starting with the grips because the Santa Cruz branded ones are so good. They were really soft, really grippy rubber. The grips were grippy. I think everybody oh, agreed. Yeah. They were so good. Like, I'm not all that picky about grips, but I got really excited about these. I mean, it's a contact point. Yeah, yeah. It's it like is. a seat. I know they're personal it's, things, but yeah. it's something that to point out that it's a mm -hmm. small detail that makes sense. And on a bike like this, it matters. Moving on from grips, those reserve wheels are really good. They were stiff, so they contributed to that bike's snappy feel, but they they were solid performers. And a lifetime warranty. Yeah, that's important. That's huge. Carbon. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what about the brakes as well? This thing comes with code RSCs. Did you like them? Yeah, I mean, those are pretty tried and true. I think everybody kind of knows how they work. 
by now. They have a more linear feel compared to say the TRPs or the Maguras. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they just kind of set it and forget it and they do the things. Okay. Mm -hmm. I should probably mention the suspension. It comes with that Fox 38 and X2, top of the line for this build. Both were solid, didn't give us any issues and offered plenty of adjustments. If we're here talking about components, we got to talk about this Axis stuff as well that the bike came with. Alicia, did you like the Axis? Sure, yeah. I mean, it's X01 Axis, so it better work well. And it did work well. There was a little bit of an issue in that the clutch didn't have as much tension as we think it should have. Like there was more chain slap than a bike like this should have. We also need to talk about the storage compartment in the Mega Towers down tube. It's called the glove box. Let some water in though, which isn't good. It's only yeah. your gloves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gloves. Yeah, the glove box, it's a really well finished, tidy closure, but the door isn't completely sealed and it does come with a neoprene bag. However, if you had something that shouldn't get wet, if you're washing a bike or leaving it out in the rain, it's, yeah, it's gonna get It's gonna get wet even in yeah. the neoprene bag. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's right. Riding in the out. conditions we had this week? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All the washing. Now there was one other thing to complain about, that was the seat post. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dropper post, it's that reverb from RockShox. It just, it got squishy over and over and over. There's no reason to have a post that does that. Like there are cable posts that work really well. Honestly, I don't understand why you would spec a hydraulic seat post when the cable ones are so much simpler and tend to be so much more reliable. We should also point out that we did reset that post a yes. number of times mm -hmm. and it would go firm and then the, the squishiness would come back. So. Yeah, it's also one of those things where little things like even just picking up the bike using the seat when it's down will try to suck air into the system and just it's super self-sabotaging, I think. You guys are such downers. Maybe it's a suspension uh, seat post. I don't it, know what the problem is. Yep. All right, Throwback let's move to on to timed testing. Alicia, mm -hmm. let's talk about that. How did your timing go on the Mega Tower? Mega Tower was in fifth place, one tenth of a second behind the patrol, and about one second ahead of the Contra. So I attribute that, it's just a little, I think the stiffness made it harder to hold a line, a little less compliant than the patrol. However, it was a lot of fun. It was very easy for me to ride, like easy to get along with. So it falls in that, the middle cluster of bikes that I had a lot of very closely clustered ones that I consider essentially tied. So I'll put it on the solid performer level. Matt? Yeah, mine was actually the fifth fastest run on the Mega Tower as well. So yeah, I had uh, a similar cluster in like that uh, 214 range, uh, the fastest time being the 210 on the Contra. So yeah, they, they felt, it felt like a, a race run. I was holding on tight, mm -hmm. I was charging stuff, um, but just riding you know, in a controlled way to get even times. And this one had a little bit more feedback and required a little bit more, you know, honing that like race, mm -hmm. race run feel. A little mm -hmm. more management. Yeah. Like you can't just ride and forget about it. You a little have more to, brain power, a little yeah, more concentration. Manage a little more. Yeah. On to models and pricing. This is an expensive bicycle, Matt, 11,200 American dollars. What if I didn't have that amount of money? What if I had less money to spend? Is there a different model I should consider? Uh, there is, but you're still gonna have to spend a lot because there is no aluminum frame option. We did have the CC frame, which is a little bit higher end. There is the cheaper C frame, which is available with the GX Axis for okay. 8,500 US. Okay. And that comes with Fox Performance Elite suspension, so you still get all the clickers, but you get aluminum wheels. All right, that sounds like the better choice. For me personally, maybe not for you guys, I don't know. All right, we're gonna move on to pros and cons next. Alicia, I want you to tell me the good stuff. Yeah, storage in the frame, always a plus. It's nice to just have to think about fewer things as you head out the door. Also the size specific chain stays is cool, just because the bike will change a lot of character if you keep the same chain stay length through all the sizes. So just having that adjustment through the size range sort of maintains the bike personality throughout the whole range. And then also the lightweight makes it really manageable. So it's such a capable bike, it can handle a lot. It's kind of a bruiser in some ways. And at the same time, it's a really good pedaler for what it is. What didn't you like, Matt? Tell us the cons. 
I mean, it's kind of hard to get away from riding a bike that's loud and there was a little bit more chain slap on this than expected. Um, I mean, there is the adjustment for the flip chip, but that's a pretty minimal in terms of degrees. And you have to run a 29 inch wheel. They got rid of the chain stay adjustment on this new mega tower. Those are fixed per size as Alicia mentioned, which is great if you're going for that specific size. All right, we're gonna wrap this up by talking about who best suits this bike, which is who, Alicia? It's hard to pick a specific person because the bike is very well-rounded, as we've said. So honestly, almost anyone who's looking for an enduro bike mm -hmm. that has a wide range of applications, like you can race enduro, you can take it to the bike park, you can trail ride on it. You can do all of the things if you're gonna just have one longer travel bike. Also someone who has a fair amount of money to spend just because there aren't lower priced models. Other than that, it's a solid contender all around. Do you agree? Yeah, totally. It is a fairly aggressive angled bike, even though it is light. So it's just gonna be a little bit more effort on flatter trails to move around. <laughs> that is a really slack head angle and it's gonna excel when things get really rough and steep. All right, there you go. That is our review of Santa Cruz's brand new Mega Tower. Tell us what you think of this bike in the comments and stay tuned for more reviews and roundtable discussions from our Enduro Bike Field Test in Bellingham, Washington.